with HBO's House of the Dragon and Amazon Prime's Rings of Power, airing both their first season now. People can't help but draw comparisons between the two fantasy shows. Frankly speaking, House of the Dragons is just better than Rings of Power, and for today's video, we'll explain to you why we believe so. Now, if you don't want to miss out on our explanation, make sure you keep watching until the end. For today's video, we're going to have to come clean. House of the Dragon is just better than Rings of Power. Two programs, two expansive fantasy worlds, and two streaming competitors investing way too much money in each of them. Even while both may have been doing okay up until this point, after a few episodes, one appears to be more popular than the other, and House of the Dragon on HBO triumphs against The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power on Amazon. Although fans and critics have given different ratings to the two episodes, House of the Dragon apparently has a bigger viewership, despite the difficulty in tracking these streamers, and significantly higher fan submission ratings. There has undoubtedly been prejudice and experienced by the cast of each program. Both programs have strong female leads in Rhaenyra and Galadriel. Both series have made an effort to diversify a predominantly white fantasy world by using black actors. Black elves, dwarves, and queens can be found in Rings of Power as well, as well as the Black Valerian Noble House and its dragon riders in House of the Dragon. Rings of Power is far behind House of the Dragon in terms of fan support, and given that both shows have similarly promoted diversity and have encountered a similar backlash, we believe believe there is something to that. It's unable to account for Rings' review bombing in its totality or the reception gap. At the very least though, these initial episodes, House of the Dragon is clearly the superior program. Rings of Power has cast a very wide net, providing us with places and people from all over the world, while constructing a lengthy, minimal overall plot arc. It has a vague antagonist in the form of Sauron, but in the meantime must sift through a vast amount of deeply ingrained Tolkien history, and thus far has had difficulty creating admirable individuals inside that space. House of the Dragon, on the other hand, immediately and clearly establishes its conflict, which is essentially a lesser version of the primary Game of Thrones series, Power Struggle for the Throne. It has already introduced several memorable characters, such as Otto Hightower, who is already as despicable as any Lannister or Bolton, and Rhaenyra, who you can't help but root for, and grey figures like Matt Smith's Damon have been handled superbly. There is no need for a full season of setup, because the action is happening right now and the characters are interesting right away, which I don't think is the case with Rings of Power. This isn't to imply that the Rings of Power series is subpar. You also can't disagree with the results of that money, which includes some of the most exquisite computer graphics I've ever seen on television. But compared to House of the Dragon, it takes longer to get going, and its characters aren't as well written at first, whether you're supposed to adore them or loathe them. While House of the Dragon has quickly become a Sunday must-watch, Rings of Power is currently merely okay. We believe that at least some of this is due to experience. Game of Thrones veterans, who clearly understand what made the series core compelling, run House of the Dragon. Since viewers are questioning the alterations the program has made to the world, Rings of Power's first-time showrunners will have a challenging learning curve, in addition to the simply crazy amount of baggage from Tolkien's lore. George R. R. Martin's Fire and Blood hasn't faced the same resistance as House of the Dragon, and it certainly helps, because Martin is actively participating in the production of House of the Dragon. Although Tolkien passed away 50 years ago, Rings of Power has time to develop. But as of right now, we believe House of the Dragon is unquestionably the superior option. That much at least is true. The supporters are correct. And if you want more reasons, we're happy to give them to you. Additionally, House of the Dragon respects the source material. It's impressive that House of the Dragon surpasses Rings of Power in the category of fidelity to the source material, especially in light of the conscientious and divided Game of Thrones finale. At the height of House Targaryen's dominance, George R. R. Martin's fictional universe comes to life, and so far, it's performing better than expected. When writing the vast and nuanced history of Westeros in his novels, Martin drew inspiration from the history of our own planet. There aren't many characters in the series that are totally good or purely bad, making the political conflict fascinating to watch. Furthermore, Fire and Blood by George R. R. Martin is turning out to be an even greater read than we had anticipated. On the other hand, Rings of Power is promoted as a component of J. R. R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings universe, and is said to be based on the appendices of Tolkien's the Lord of the Rings, but it feels almost completely disconnected from the world and characters Tolkien created. And in the case of Rings of Power, the on-screen world building is pretty messy. The universe that Tolkien created in his works was far more intricately detailed 
than the one in Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire volumes. On screen, however, the outcomes are wholly different. The world building of House of the Dragon has been impressively detailed, with each noble house's symbol being scrupulously maintained throughout the whole production. That covers the entire set design, as well as the attire, accessories, and props. The independent residents of Dorne can be easily distinguished from the well-mannered homes of the Reach by viewers. Additionally, each location has its own unique appearance and traditions, from the free cities to the Dothraki Grass Sea. Rings of Power has created a stunning world with oceans, mountains, caves, and plains on screen, making it obvious where those millions of dollars were spent. The elves, dwarves, humans, and harfoots, however, were hardly depicted in the first two episodes. Additionally, it's nearly impossible to keep track of all the different people and places. Furthermore, House of the Dragon has more political intrigue than Rings of Power. The political intrigue and struggle for dominance among the rival families were one of our favorite aspects of Game of Thrones, and House of the Dragon is essentially based on those elements. The politics and internal strife within House Targaryen are at the heart of the action, and everyone involved is always striving to outwit and outsmart one another. All of the various races in Middle-earth have their own political structures, which are mostly monarchies. All of these societies and rings of power are battling a massive, ominous threat, which essentially eliminates any political intrigue or conflicts that made House of the Dragon so compelling. And of the two, House of the Dragon has a bigger audience. It's really challenging to figure out how many people are actually viewing these shows in the era of streaming. However, it seems like House of the Dragon has a considerably larger audience than Rings of Power, which makes it superior to that game. More than 25 million people, including 10 million live viewers, saw the House of the Dragon pilot, according to HBO. According to Deadline, those live viewer figures have risen during the first three episodes. Additionally, the early audience and review responses have been largely favorable. On the other side, Amazon has been evasive regarding the size of the Rings of Power audience. According to Variety, they stated 25 million people viewed the first episode globally. Fans cannot, however, submit user evaluations to AmazonPrime.com. Additionally, a large group of online content producers has made money off of videos attacking the series. It also doesn't help that Rings of Power has a truckload of characters. All of the main characters were presented to the audience early on in House of the Dragon, and they were each given distinct personalities and traits. Fans immediately recognized the flawed King Viserys, Patty Considine, the independent Princess Rhaenyra, Millie Alcock, and Emma Darcy, and the rogue Prince Daemon Targaryen despite everyone having platinum blonde hair, Matt Smith. A considerably larger ensemble cast, featuring a variety of places and races, can be found in Rings of Power. It's nearly impossible to empathize with any of the characters since there are so many of them. Furthermore, the characters we loved in Peter Jackson's trilogy are nothing like Galadriel, Morfid Clark, and Elrond, Robert Aramayo, and probably the most important reason of all. House of the Dragon made us forget about Game of Thrones' controversial Season 8. In their respective realms, House of the Dragon and Rings of Power are sequels of controversial works. Game of Thrones' historic misstep in the final season led to many doubters going into House of the Dragon. The prequel's initial episodes, however, have been so excellent that viewers have essentially forgotten what transpired three years before. Rings of Power has been another huge letdown for Tolkien fans. After the disastrous The Hobbit trilogy, which should not have been expanded to three films. And on that note, we're ending today's episode about why House of the Dragon is better than Rings of Power. What do you think? Do you find House of the Dragon more entertaining than Rings of Power? Let us know in the comment section below. Before you go, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to our channel with the notification bell on for more videos like these. See you next time and thanks for watching.